I was asked to celebrate Mass Day in the homily, I said yes right away. But later I thought, wait a minute, uh, I'm not an expert on the homeless. What am I going to say? And then I stopped to think a little bit of all the homeless people that I've met along the way. When I was at Fordham in the Bronx, on Webster Avenue, there was a homeless shelter and food kitchen where I'd go once in a while with Fordham students. And then at St. Francis Xavier Church on 16th Street in New York, next to Xavier High School, every Sunday morning, about 200 homeless people would line up on 16th Street waiting for dinner to be served in the student cafeteria. Sometimes I helped prepare the food, sometimes I helped serve it. And now I live up on Bergen Avenue in Jersey City, up by Hudson Catholic, and next to St. Aidan's Church, as you know that place. And almost every night, when Father O'Hare and I walk down the block to join the rest of the Jesuit community for dinner, there is a homeless man sitting on the steps outside our house. We have to walk around him to get to the, down the steps. And almost every night, Father O'Hare takes a dollar out of his pocket and gives it to that man. Let me see a show of hands here. How many of you encounter a homeless person on the way to school, on the path, on the, on the, in the station, light rail? Yes. How many of you have passed by homeless people in your own hometown where you live? It seems like the homeless have been with us everywhere and for a long time. The prophet Isaiah in the 6th century before Christ lists homelessness along with other injustices in his time Press the hungry, the naked, turning your back on your own flesh. Yes, our own flesh. Turning our back on them. People <coughs> just like ourselves. His words were directed to people of faith, just like us, who thought they only had to pray or fast and go to worship to be considered good or holy, or religious. Isaiah says, no, this isn't the way of God. God's way means first and foremost, reaching out to those who are in need to correct social injustices. I asked Senior Tim Bergetti, a member of the Arupe Week Planning Committee, to offer some reflections on the readings and on his own experience. Father Mullen originally asked me to help him give part of the homily at today's Mass last Friday. Nervous, scared, and unwilling to step beyond my comfort zone, I spent the entire weekend thinking about how I was going to politely tell Father that I wasn't going to help him. I was still juggling excuses in my head until right before Jim White gave our Arabic week keynote speech Monday morning. Sitting in my seat Monday as not only a member of the Arabic week planning committee, but as a Christian, I realized no matter how I tried to justify not speaking today, it wouldn't work. You see, what struck me about Mr. White's speech was the image of Peter stepping out of the boat to meet Jesus. How could I genuinely have followed my faith if I wouldn't dare step out of my boat? So at lunchtime Monday, I walked up to Father's office and agreed to speak with you all today. Here I am, nervous, uncomfortable, scared, stepping out of my boat. We heard Mr. White repeat this image many times to show the faith and courage of St. Peter, for whom our school is named. But I believe that this image should be at the forefront of all of our minds today for two other reasons. The first is Lent. The season of Lent is a season of many things. I'm sure most of you associate it with choosing something to give up. But Lent is just as much about fasting as it is about devoting ourselves to Christ. One of the best ways in which to do this, as heard in today's readings, is to help the poor, hungry, and marginalized. We are called to feed the hungry, to give drink to the thirsty, to welcome the stranger, to clothe the naked, to care for the ill. 
When preparing to speak to you all today, I came across a quote from St. John Chrysostom. He said, Not to enable the poor to share in our goods is to steal from them and deprive them of life. The goods we possess are not ours, but theirs. So yes, life is about self-discipline and fasting, but it is also about stepping out of our boats and doing everything we can to bring those who need it aboard. It is about helping those in our communities who need it the most. The second reason why this image of Jesus, Peter, and the boat is so important lies in this year's theme for a really homelessness. As mentioned before, there could not be a better time than Lent to shine a spotlight on the least among us, nor is there a better way to prepare for the resurrection of Christ. When Mr. White called us to step out of our boats, I, I heard a call to faith, a call to learn about the crisis of homelessness, a call to internalize what being homeless actually means in today's society, a call to do something about it, however big or small. When I was a sophomore, one of the principal parts of our sophomore retreat was serving dinner at her homeless shelter in Union City. At that time, I was very indifferent about the whole situation. I'm normally a pretty reserved guy, so sitting down and talking with a bunch of strangers would have never sounded like fun to me. And it definitely didn't help that all I knew about the homeless were the unfair stereotypes and stigmas. After prolonging dinner service as long as I could, I finally sat down at one of the tables with the residents of the shelter. As I sat, I heard in a very unexpected British accent, what are you studying, young man? Having been forced to raise my eyes from my plate, I began to have a conversation with the gentleman in front of me. After dinner, I was shocked. You see, the man I had spent dinner speaking with was not only very fond of history like myself, but also Oxford educated. Yet here he was speaking with me in, Union, in a Union City homeless shelter. He was a regular person like me. While I never found out why or how Andrew ended up homeless, I realized that as Jesus tells us, the homeless are our brothers. They are the same as us, just in different circumstances. And while sophomore year I didn't step out of my boat, rather I was thrown, I am all the better for it. It was this experience that made me volunteer at Perk through Pax Christi every other time I had the chance. It also led me to take part in the LA mission trip, and it is undoubtedly why this year's Arupe Week topic hits a special chord with me. You might think I was the one serving Andrew, but he really served me. My service to Andrew, the least of my brothers, brought me closer to Christ. So after lift the liturgy today, all of you will be attending Arupe Week breakout sessions. I can personally tell you that a lot of time, effort, and care has gone into the selection of each and every one of the sessions. Continuing with this image of the boat, we as the planning committee hope you use these sessions as your life vest and swimming. They're designed to make taking that first step out of the boat as easy as possible. We urge you to, at the very least, hang your feet over the edge, to listen with care, to reflect on your own life, to think of the least among us. Lastly, we hope that by the end of today, you all will be ready to step out of your boats and serve the homeless in your own personal way. Please take that step with me, because faith, with faith in Christ, the water will always be fine. Thank you, Tim. Just a few thoughts to conclude. Ernst Tim said he was indifferent when he first went to Perk in New York City. Recently, Pope Francis said, for Lent, fast from being indifferent to the poor, the homeless, the needy. Fast from being indifferent. And secondly, Tim said that his service brought him closer to Christ. St. Christ who said, Whoever, whatsoever you did for one of these least of my brothers and sisters of mine, you do for me. So let's go out. Don't be indifferent. Make a difference. Go out and meet your God. Be Christ in service to others.